Hello again, and welcome to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Each episode, we cover an aspect of sex that impacts your sex life and something that you can relate to. So if you find our discussions helpful, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We would love it if you would tell a friend about us. You can find us also on the web at foreplayrst.com. And if you have a comment or a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to us at info at foreplayrst.com. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Lori. How are you? Um, good. Good. So you're you're in the midst of moving weekend, right? Uh, yeah. Coming up, we are moving our offices. We're expanding to a big old space. So I have furniture all over my house and all in my garage, and uh, it's just it's kind of it's kind of maddening. My daughter thinks that we are actually moving houses she oh, said that she's going to be responsible for carrying the tv <laughs> and making sure that the tv goes with us <laughs> yeah and then when my wife the important thing the important thing forget the wife, cat just that's grab right. the tv uh, yeah um you yeah, know no we would never have a cat dog but um when um yeah when my wife said no we're not moving we're just it's all for our office office she said well, why wouldn't you want a TV in your office? <laughs> so she is, she, she's a little obsessed. Maybe has her priorities. In and your place. office is so cute. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So hoping yeah. to replicate. Well, to replicate well, that. well done. Well yeah. organized and well designed. I was awesome. very impressed. Yeah, cool. So we're going to talk about masculinity today, the complexity of masculine sexuality. Yes, which is a complex topic to talk about the complex, With the complex mas- man. masculine for the complex man. <laughs> <For> the complex <laughs> man. <laughs> I wonder. I think men feel like that's what's happening to masculinity. That it's become. It used to be simple and straightforward. Sure. And now it's becoming a lot more complex. Even before you add in when you narrow it down to sexuality, just the idea of masculinity seems to be just being a man. Yeah, and what yeah. It, what it means to be a man is seems like it's becoming more and more complex. Do you notice that as mm-hmm. well? Do you feel like sure. see that? Sure. I mean, right, you know, before maybe a generation or two before there were roles, I think, for everybody. Yeah. And there were some problems with that, Certainly. obviously, Certainly, and yeah. problems in marriage, particularly with that. But I think sort of feeling like you had a path, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do, might have felt safer and more secure. And now suddenly there's there's more that's demanded. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, for all the problems with those roles, the expectations were at least clean cut, mm-hmm. right? Or at least from a male viewpoint, they probably were. Right. And so as that evolves and changes, knowing exactly what's expected of me, what am I supposed to do? And then you take that into the bedroom, mm-hmm. and it seems like then it gets, confu- it can be confusing as well, especially that that may have seemed like the last uh, bastion of malehood. It's like, what do you do? What do you the, do in the what, bed? what do you do in the bedroom? But now that seems to be changing as well. Yeah. Right? Is that f- is that fair or unfair? What do you what do you think? I think it's really problematic for men, right? I mean, there's a lot of messages about what it means to be a real man in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. You know, mostly I think what men hear in pop culture is what it means to be a real man in the bedroom is to have a great erection. A big, mm-hmm. great erection. Yes. That works every single time. Yes. That's what it means to be a man. Yeah, and if you can't do that, then you're failing. Yep. Right. Yep. You're falling down on the job, so to speak. Yep. And I think the other thing that I hear, and particularly because I have sons, I'm aware of the pressure in our culture is you're supposed to want it all the time. You're supposed to want a lot of women, have sex with a lot of women. Um, you know, the, the idea of conquest is really a part of what we think of as male sexuality, right? Yeah, there was a high school out in California that got some news because the guys in the high school would go around wearing numbers on their shirts. They oh, would no. wear like jerseys. Oh, no. And the jersey numbers were the amount of girls that they had oh. um, slept with. Oh, wow. Right? Mm-hmm. And so they would wear different jerseys all the time with numbers on them, not their school jerseys, but others. Sure. And that was sure. and that was indicating to all the rest of the guys in the mm-hmm. school how many sexual um, partners they had. had. Conquest. Conquest, yeah. Really, it wasn't not partners. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine though the pressure of a young man, right? Mm-hmm. Who's thinking, I'm a zero. Yeah. You know, I'm a big zero. 
Right. And this guy, this jock is a, you know, 14, you know, and, and that makes him more of a man than me. I mean, I, you know, when it becomes about conquest, it's a really interesting thing. I, I, I worry about that. I really worry about our young people in terms of their first experiences, given the exposure to porn, the pressure that, you know, for both men and women, uh, yeah. but certainly for young men. I, well, it's because it's, it's so reductionistic about sex, right? I mean, yeah. it, it reduces it to something that is not mutual, first of all, right? Because it's not really about the relationship. It's more about, did I actually just make the act happen, first mm -hmm. of all? And then it, and it, so it distorts, it really distorts sexuality, not to mention which it applies a bunch of pressure to young men to to exactly what you are talking about and to have larger numbers because let's let's be honest all those boys in, in that high school in California weren't telling the truth right <laughs> they, there's probably no probably not there's no way because it's, it's not. there's no there's no proof right there's no proof and so like but it, but how awful that must be as yeah. a young man to feel like you know that you have to prove somehow or another your your very being by mm. how many girls you slept with you know i and we know there's stereotypes. In fact, I've been accused of, you know, recently of spreading stereotypes. And, you know, it's hard to say anything about any gender, either gender, um, without maybe resorting to stereotypical ideas. But I think we wanted to talk about it. This is pervasive. I mean, I, I think it's, it, it can be stereotypical, but it is also fairly pervasive. And most men have faced some of these things, right? Sure, sure. And I think about the young men who this group, right? They're going to parties, they're wearing these jerseys, they're probably drinking a bunch of alcohol. You know, with alcohol, are they really able to perform? Yeah. You know, they're having ED. How do you grow up with all of those experiences? And, and then maybe, you know, what if the boy says, or the young man says, you know, but I really actually like this special girl. Hmm. You know, and he wants to be emotionally connected to her. He wants her only. Yeah. You know, somehow or another these days, that's, you, you know, you're, you're hardly part of the game. You're hardly part of the hookup culture if, if you want something emotional. Yeah. But, but the research shows that for all of us, really satisfying sex is, is more about deep, deep connection with the partner. It, it's really not about technique. I mean, you can have fabulous sex without an erection, believe it or not. Yeah. Men tend to not seek help when they have any kind of ED issue, right? Sure. I mean, they, they tend to probably keep it to themselves because it becomes so shaming rather than something that could be just a natural occurring within the context of which they're happening, right? That's right. That's right. Because he may have ED because he's tired or he's not attracted to his partner or he's, th there might be phys something physiologically wrong, but it might be, I think I'm really referring to the emotional causes of ED. Yeah. You know, with all that expectation, he may not be able to examine himself and mm -hmm. say, why is my penis not behaving? You yeah. know, why I, I'm supposed to perform here and it's not, you know, how lovely it would be if the man could say, this is why. E even if he could say it to himself, mm -hmm. you know, this is what it is. And then I think, honestly, I am a sex therapist, but, you know, if you go to sex therapy to get cured of ED, and you might wind up with a sex therapist that that's all they're thinking about is, okay, let's get you, let's get you working again. Well, that increases the pressure as well. It right? does. Yeah. It does without maybe examining the whole, yeah. you know, what is he feeling about sex? What is he feeling about this person he's with? What, what's going on with him on the inside? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, before Viagra, right? I mean, there was that oftentimes there was a more intrapsychic look. It, what did it mean? What did the erection failure mean? Yeah. Whereas now it's like, let, let's just pump him up. Yeah. The Viagra and those, those other ED medications has really reduced, again, that, that, that word keeps coming to mind. It's, it's reductionistic. It's only addressing one part of the problem and not the whole of the person, which can be really damaging and set people, set people back. That's right. And that's right. I mean, it, I mean, we can give them a pill. We can make them functional. We can give them exercises and make them functional. But, but if that's all it is, you know, and he hasn't examined himself, or the therapist doesn't help him examine what it means, you know, what is this saying? Then, then he never really has a full experience sexually, right? Right. So that's really also saying that we have to start thinking of sex as more than just 
the performance as more than just, even if you don't think of it as conquest, you're thinking of it more complete than it is not sex, a healthy sexual relationship with my partner is more than just my ability to get an erection and to have an orgasm. Yeah, and, and I know we're going to have to go on break here for a minute, but I, you know, I think that the trophyism idea that you just spoke of, what happens when he's won the trophy? Mm-hmm. You know, if there's no longer conquest, conquering other women, you know, and other women are desirable to him, I mean, how does he, how does he manage this in a culture that esteems that? That says, you know, if you get the most attractive girl, the most attractive woman, you're the winner. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I, I just, I just think, and that proves your prowess as a man. That proves your sexual masculinity if you have the most attractive woman out there. Yeah. Woo! That yeah. is tough. Yeah, that's that tough. That's really tough. Because that, that again is so, is that, I mean, in some cases that's subjective, right? Mm-hmm. And so that makes it hard to have some kind of definitive statement. And then what happens when, as she, as the woman ages, yeah, and, and looks she's changed. no longer the trophy, right? Yeah. Well, which means you have to go find another. You one. have to go find another one. Yeah. Because your very being depends on your, your validation depends on what your partner looks like. Hmm. It doesn't matter what's going on between the two of you. What's satisfying? What's good? It it's really a stroking of a competition, right? Other men will see this. And therefore, know that I'm really a, a real man. Yeah. So, Lori, why don't we come back and talk about the and continue that because I think that's a good direction about the the difficulty of integrating sexuality and emotionality as okay. well, and those okay. two things and the issues that they can bring up for men. Okay, we'll be right back with Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. Wanting sex again. How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy. Improve your sex and improve your relationship with Awakening Center for Couples and Intimacy. Find out more at awakenloveandsex.com. Awaken what's possible. It is one of my great joys in life to be able to really help individuals and couples find strength in their relationships and really find hope again. Licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews from Matthews Counseling. I work with a wide variety of issues, including depression and anxiety, marital issues, issues with adolescence. I believe that therapy should be designed around you, that it should be personalized to who you are and to your unique situation. Therapy is available in office, online, and by phone. I want therapy to be comfortable for everyone. At our office, you'll find that we sit around a fireplace in deep, comfortable chairs, look at the problem differently, and offer practical solutions for you to take home and utilize outside of the therapy room. Schedule today and rediscover hope. You can find me on the web at matthewscounseling.net. Matthews with one T. You can contact us through email or phone and find a lot of resources on our website, matthewscounseling.net. back with Four Play Radio Sex Therapy talking about the complexity of masculine sexuality. Yeah, and you were talking about trophyism before, the idea that when we reduce sex to being about conquest, then it's about obtaining the trophy, right? And it's right. about the, the getting the prettiest girl, getting the most girls maybe. Right. Um, and that becomes in adulthood with our relationships, that becomes very problematic mm-hmm. because it doesn't address the complexity, specifically the emotional component in the relationship that's right Um, and lord is there is it worth delving into where some of this comes from for men like where what's the source of some of this i know we probably couldn't say this is the one source but what are some of the sources that you think 
Well, this I, comes I mean, from. I, I think that it's a there's a lot of cultural pressure. You know, certainly porn is another problematic influence in terms of telling men how they should feel about sex. You know, you think about the gyrating girl who has this huge orgasm in porn. Mm -hmm. And then the average man who has sex with his wife who maybe isn't gyrating and isn't as expressive, which we can talk about that another day in and of itself, but, but really the problem comes when he feels then he's inadequate. Mm -hmm. You know, if I were a better lover, more of a man, this is the, the, the pop I would get out of this experience. She'd yeah. get this big pop and I'd see it and then I would know I'm a true man. Yeah, so as and relationship, I'm just like, oh, that is just so hopeless. Well, and because, and too because as relationships age, right? As the relationships get older, the ex that may have been the excitement even if there was some of that pop in the beginning, that's not going to continue to be there in the same way, right? Especially if the emotional relationship isn't isn't addressed. I I think the hopeful thing in a relationship that grows that is longer and grows deeper is that there can be transcendence, you know, that, you, that you're that you not as focused on the actual mechanics, but that you begin to know each other so deeply that it becomes really satisfying. I, I guess that's what I, that's what I was saying, is that the when you don't address the emotional intimacy in your relationship as a relationship mm -hmm. ages, the ease of which that sexual excitement was there in the beginning of the relationship isn't going to be there because you haven't addressed the emotional intimacy. Right. right. And I think that, you know, for men, they're socialized, right, to feel shame over being weak and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then they get into relationship and let alone a long-term monogamous sexual relationship and they're conditioned, don't show any weakness, don't show any vulnerability. Well, they, they associate emotion, emotionality with weakness. Right. I think I think it's like I don't think that vulnerability is weakness, but I think that's what it gets associated with, as well as showing any other emotion. I think culturally, men's emotions get regulated to either being all the emotion that we can show is either no emotion or anger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so most men typically go back and forth between not being emotionally expressive at all, and, or if they are emotional, it, it's a it's a expression, uh, it's a visual or behavioral expression of anger, mm -hmm. um, rather than really understanding where that anger is coming from, or sharing um, why they're angry, why they're angry, or sharing other uh, the other range of emotions. Right, because anger is kind of like a top level, mm -hmm. more defensive emotion. It's not necessarily, I'm disappointed, I'm afraid, I'm insecure, mm -hmm. right? You know, I don't know if you love me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you desire me. It's, yeah. it's not a vulnerability. Yeah. But you're right. It's kind of attack. It's fight or flee. Yeah. Or and fight that's or withdraw. It. That's it. You know? Yeah. I, a lot of times I use an emotion wheel. Have you ever used an emotion wheel in I therapy? Haven't. No. It's, you can Google it. It's it's out there on the internet. If you go go look up, just Google emotion wheel. Okay. And what I do is it's a it's a wheel that kind of has your core emotions in the center and then some other emotions out that radiate out from that. Mm -hmm. um, there are probably over 200 emotions listed on there. And almost every time when I show what I get men saying a lot of times is I'm just so angry or they'll say if, if they, you know, are a little bit more emotionally advanced or in touch, they'll say I'm really hurt mm -hmm. rather than being specific. And when I show them the emotion wheel, they are always it's the same response every single time. I had no idea that many emotions existed, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. every, every single time. I think the idea that there's more ways to express yourself and to help identify what you're feeling and what your partner is feeling is so foreign to guys because we're not taught how to identify those emotions, name them, and then communicate them with our partners. So this wheel is, it lists all the, the various emotions. Mm -hmm lots and lots of them and and maybe helps people understand men and women but men understand specifically what they're feeling it gives them labels for it yeah so yeah and i mean i think this is socialization for little boys right we yeah. we overall toxically do not let little boys have a variety of emotions oh yeah we're worried if they feel insecure we tell them to toughen up toughen is up is what we do yeah. Or that, or just you know, pick themselves up. That's you know, that's not the way the real world works. And we don't do that with with little girls often. Not as much. Not as much. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and and so like that. So little girls can are allowed basically to have more emotions and can 
often learn emotional intelligence more because they're allowed that. Mm -hmm. And what I understand you saying is that that being able to connect emotionally is one of the keys to a satisfying and to satisfying sex life, and that that often that when we address that, that we can often really increase the passion with which we're engaging in sex. That's right, it, and it's not just for women. I mean, actually, men report as well that the deepest, most satisfying part of sex is the emotional component as well as is, is being in it, sort of merged with their partner. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're worried about technique. If you're worried about your erection, really hard to get merged. Yeah. If, if you don't have a close emotional life with your partner, really hard to get merged with them. I think that also men are shamed over ever wanting physical comfort. Mm. You now I was telling a, a patient of mine who had a really traumatic background that my sons come home and they came home from college and they would still like lie on the couch and want me to scratch their heads, you know, and um, lots of hugs and. I mean, I probably hug my kids when they're home from college, mm -hmm. you know, multiple times a day. Yeah. You know, kiss them, hug them. I mean, there's a lot of affection still. And, and it was just like this foreign concept, right? Because oh, really? boys, you know, that especially in his era, um, and I think his experience was there was no such thing as being able to request physical, sensual touch. It mm -hmm. was uh, the only way a man can get it is to request sex. You know, he mm. may actually want his head scratched and be held by his wife, yeah. but that's unmanly. Yeah. And and then you think about the, how that impacts the quality of sex. If if you're just, if what you really want is to be held or, or touched or stroked, mm -hmm. but you don't feel permission to have that, so then you go through this motion of sex, which wasn't what you wanted really. Yeah. You know, wh how does that translate? Yeah, I think I think I've heard so many men. The complaint from their wives may be something along the lines of, "He only wants sex. He doesn't want to have sex with me. He just wants to have sex." Exactly. And then when, but when we get underneath that, and the the man is probably communicating that. Um, mm, sure, he but, is. Yeah. But when we get underneath that, oftentimes it is he sees sex more in the way that you're talking about it right there. It's more of a need, and it's not just he just doesn't want sex. He wants affection, and he wants touch, and he wants um, all those things that you mentioned, but has very little idea how to express that, um, mm -hmm. and how to how to talk about that, or how to re how to like you said to request it. But it's there. I think it's there for a lot of men, especially once they take sex from this real generalized hyper masculine conquest idea and begin to get more into a relational idea and relational component of sex. Right, and we're not dissing desire. We're not no, dissing not feeling horny. We're, we're talking about complexity. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, sometimes if that's your only avenue to get affection and sensuality and you feel like you have to express it, you know, in sex, then it's this mechanical thing. And sometimes I, I think that the separation in sex, right, is when, I mean, you can have great orgasms, mm -hmm. but you may not have great sex. Yeah. I know, heard because it's not, it's not connecting. Yeah. I heard a client talk about that they would take, you know, like robot sex with their wife, like where she just uh -huh. is, is mechanical and cold. Right. Well, they got right. those dolls now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where you can order them, I'm sure. Amazon, does Amazon sell them now? Probably. Um, you can get them delivered by a drone. That would be something. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, the, 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 doll the doll being carried through the neighborhood. <laughs> Look at what Mr. Adams got. <laughs> we just everybody's just following it to see to yeah. see whose house it's going to. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyway, as the, the client was saying, like you know, because of because men are wired that way, we'll take sex where we can get it. But the client was saying, but that's not what I really want. And over, if that's the only sex mm -hmm. that's happening, that he's going to start feeling really, he's not going to be satisfied with that, yeah. right? That's not going to be what he ultimately wants. He'll take it for a while. And maybe there are sometimes intermittent in that where it is just wild animal sex just for sex sake. Absolutely. Um, because I think that's that can be part of a passion absolutely and, and i think that well. that that part of masculine sexuality is often denigrated as well yeah you know that it's not equivalent to female sexuality that sometimes he does want it down and dirty you know stop drop and roll and some and he gets a bad rap on that end too right i mean 
it, it's complicated being but don't, bi. But don't you think that it, it would, is it helpful for women if they start to see sex in their partner as a need rather than as a brutish conquest type of thing? I mean, I, it probably is another podcast, but okay. I, I think that there is a lot going against men. Young boys who grow up with essentially, you know, shame over being weak, they, they have to suppress this need for sensuality, you know, they have to have a hot, rock hard body, right? In these days, do adolescents have that rock hard body? And it all comes at a time in their life when they're not very skilled interpersonally, all that pressure. And then we expect them to be great connected lovers when they get married or when they get in a committed partnership. I mean, I think that's rough. And we denigrate the things that are, you know, so masculine that, you know, that he's visual. Uh, somehow or another, that makes him bad. You know, that he that looking is a bad thing, or that he's, you know, highly passionate uh, and has high desire. That somehow or another is bad. I just, I, I think there's there's problems. And I'm not sure we have solutions today, but it was Maybe. it was certainly an interesting conversation. We'll be talking more about that. We're with you out there. Thanks for joining us on Fort Play Radio Sex Therapy. You're listening to your sex therapist, Lori Watson, and couples therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews. And a lot of these ideas were brought to me in a chapter of a book called Sex Therapy for Men in New Dimensions of Sex Therapy. And it was a chapter written by Gary Brooks and William Elder. Thanks, you guys. Brooks and Elders, you're the bomb. Thanks for bringing these ideas to our attention. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.